Hey guys, uh, welcome uh, to back to to Value Hunt, and uh, uh, this video will be a bit weird because I attempted to read annual reports out loud, and I had already like I think maybe one hour of recording of annual report reading, uh, and I wanted to do this because I thought it added some value to people that um, consume uh, information better in the audio form. And uh, I'm not saying I'm not going to do it uh, in the future, but it's just uh, super energy consuming and time consuming uh, to read it out loud because I do read all the annual reports, but I didn't knew that reading out loud was such an energy drainer. So uh, I just wanted to post this to document my attempt and uh, to incentivize people to uh, try new things also and uh, not be uh, afraid to to quit uh, when uh, it's rational to do it, I, I believe. Uh, so um, anyways, if you guys uh, really, really want me to continue doing this kind of uh, content, like reading annual reports out loud or other kinds of documents, uh, I will do it uh, with pleasure, but uh, I don't believe the investment is worth it uh, right now. So uh, I'll just publish what I, whatever I had right now. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for understanding me. Hey guys, welcome back to Value Hunt. And today we are here with a new model in our channel, uh, inspired in my friend uh, from Value Investors Club, uh, he likes to read and uh, out loud the Value Investors Club write-ups and I'm in order to model him I tried to do something similar because uh, it's kind of hard to go through all the annual reports of companies and things like that so I thought it was a good idea to do the same thing but with annual reports and with other kind of documents so I this is just an experiment uh, to see how it goes the format will be pretty raw, so I'll be just reading out loud, uh, maybe in chapters. I don't know if I'm going to do several episodes for each annual report or just dump it everything in the same one um, with chapters. But today we are going to start with UNTC. I already read the 2021 annual report, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but anyways, I, I read everything again, including the investor presentation. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you like uh, this model and I, my goal really is to add some value for the people that want to listen on the go or just uh, find it easier to listen to things instead of reading them and uh, it will enable you guys to pause, to take notes and uh, please give me any suggestions that you may, may find useful for me. And I, mainly I'll start by reading annual reports from the companies I'm currently researching because that's a way to maximize like my, my time. Uh, but I, I'm also interested in uh, reading annual reports that you guys might, fi might find, uh, um, might want me to read or things like that. So thank you so much for uh, listening to me. And I, I may, may end up doing this uh, with the annual, uh, uh, with shareholder letters and uh, things like that. So uh, please give me suggestions and help me improve because, again, this is a new format. Uh, so I hope to do my best. Uh, I will also be taking some notes uh, just to um, make this uh, simple and easy. So um, let me just also open my checklist uh, for uh, investing because that will help me uh, go through the um, through the annual reports just like I, I shared in my last video uh, I think it was two videos back uh, I can show you guys here in a second uh, yeah it was on how to invest for beginners uh, I shared my checklist and how I go through things uh, in this sense, I will go so here, reading annual reports, starting by the business section. Uh, anyways, we, we will be reading first the investment highlights uh, for UNTC. So they had reserves as of December 31, 2022 of $785 million based on the SEC standardized measure. The PD 
P, uh, PV10, which I'm not really sure what it is. Um, okay, is a, the PV10 is the calculation of the present value of estimated future oil and gas revenues. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, was 970 and 55, 57 million based on SEC pricing uh, and 585 million based on forward street pricing. All the 14 boss rigs are contracted and operating. Uh, the boss rigs are the rigs they uh, use for their operations, obviously. Um, they have a strong balance sheet as of December 31, 2022 with $214 million uh, of cash and cash equivalents. Uh, no long-term debt and $35 million on uh, bank facility. Uh, free cash flow supportive of both future shareholder returns and potential development opportunities. Their substantial uh, tax uh, shield uh, of $331 million of NOLs. Uh, these are uh, non-oil, uh, let me just check again. NOLs are net operating loss. Okay, yeah. So uh, basically, they they had losses uh, over the last year. So they have, uh, let's say, a coupon of three hundred and thirty-one million as of the th December thirty-one, twenty twenty-two. Uh, their dividend policy. So special dividend of ten dollars per share paid in January twenty twenty-three, totaling ninety-six million. Their quarterly variable dividend uh, going forward will be $2.5 per share in Q2 2023. Units ownership interest in Superior Pipeline Company, LLC, Superior, to be sold for $20 million. Okay, so they will be selling this um, subsidiary. Uh, these are consolidated financial highlights. I think I won't be reading this... Uh, the highlights because it's numbers and you guys can check it out pretty easily. Uh, but uh, the main highlights are cash and cash equivalents of two, 240 million as of December 31, 2022. No outstanding borrowings on 35 million revolver. Uh, expected federal net operating loss carry forward of 331 million as of December 31, 2022. Uh, and yeah, they they see, they say if you want more uh, detailed information, go to the 10K. Um, now, uh, a quick summary: uh, Unit petroleum is efficient, low cost production, and modestly declining PDP reserves. Uh, PDP reserves are uh, proof developed producing oil and gas reserves. So uh, they have substantial developed acreage position of. 202,000 net acres in Anacardo Basin. Uh, the development strategies are converting non-producing reserves to producing reserves, evaluating acquisitions of producing properties in core areas, high grading producing properties by selling interests in non-core areas. Reducing GNA run rate to reflect current smaller footprint and plans. Okay, here's a picture of their, uh, of their properties uh, and operations. Um, here are the unit production company reserves. Uh, the main updates, we can see uh, 93.65 uh, per barrel of oil and 6.36 uh, for uh, the gas based on the first of month prices. Uh, as an average, I think. Uh, then we have future revenue attributed 25% to oil and 27% to NGL and 48% to gas. So gas is taking most of their revenues. Um, then we have strip pricing PDP PV10 value of 585 million. Okay, this is all numbers and yeah, information. Uh, they have a modest production decline rate, uh, this is interesting. They have a total of uh, 1.3k net wells. Uh, this means that some of the wells are partially owned by this company. They have low water production, optimized production of an operating costs, uh, perform workovers, uh, recompletions and return to production to increase production. Uh, Anticipated work over and maintenance spend of 3 million per year. 
this is all uh, a bit redundant. Um, yeah, they sold interests interests in seven hundred and twenty seven wells for fifty seven million during two thousand twenty two. Uh, in Gulf Coast area, Oklahoma, Panda Hill, and other non-core assets. Uh, we'll continue to sell minor interests in outlying areas and concentrate remaining properties in core fields and place. So they are operating in a strategy that uh, they want to basically uh, focus, uh, focus and focus on the things they do the best. Mm. They have net commodity deriv derivative liability of 24 million. So these are maybe swaps, futures and things like that that they bought due to the pandemic um, because of the volatility in prices. Um, yeah, basically this is it. They, they show here a bit more about the boss drilling, uh, the environmental and safety and uh, Returning value to shareholders is pretty pretty interesting. So um, let's read this part. So recently announced future sale of units ownership interest in Superior to joint venture partners. 20 million total proceeds, 12 million to be paid at closing, 8 million to be paid at earlier of 12 months from closing or the satisfaction of certain ongoing co covenant obligations and other customary conditions. Continued shared services support for up to 12 months. 53 million total cash generated from superior investment since emergence in September 2020. So it was a pretty good return. Uh, 33 million in total distributions received by unit in 2021 and 2022. And 20 million total sales proceeds to be received by unit. Uh, there will be a special dividend of $10, as I said already. Uh, con quarterly variable dividend policy going forward of 2.5 bucks per share and subsequent variable dividends to be determined based on future operating cash flows, available cash, working capital, uh, capital expenditure requirements or opportunities among other factors. Uh, they also have been repurchasing shares. Uh, okay, these are is interesting information. And uh, yeah, then there is an appendix for uh, this report. This is just the investor's presentation. So now going forward to the 2021 report, uh, we'll be reading again the business section. Let me check if I, yeah, this one was the one that I already um, read before. But we, we are going to go through it anyways, because I think it's very, very important to read several times uh, the same reports and just to make it uh, concise and you can basically have all the reports to hear. Um, and I think that's interesting for you guys. So let me just do like this, uh, just to check. Okay, so item number one. Business. Unless otherwise indicated or required by the context, the terms company, unit, us. Okay, so I'll skip this part because it's, it's just um, uh, some regulatory things. So general, we were founded in 1963 as an oil and gas natural contract drilling company. Today, besides our drilling operations, we have operations in the exploration and production and midstream areas. We operate, manage and analyze our results of operations through our three principal business segments, oil and natural gas, carried out by our subsidiary unit petroleum company. This segment explores, develops, acquires and produces oil and natural gas properties for our account. The company initiated an asset divestiture program at the beginning of 2021 to sell certain non-core oil and gas properties and reserves the divestiture program. On October 4, 2021, the company announced that it is expanding the divestiture program to now include the potential sale of additional properties, including up to all of uh, UPCs, so Unit Petroleum Company, oil and gas properties and reserves. On January 20, 2021, the company announced that it has retained a financial advisor and launched the process. Contract drilling. 
carried out by our subsidiary unit drilling company, this segment contracts to drill onshore oil and natural gas wells for others and our account. Midstream. So this is carried out by Superior. This segment buys, sells, gathers and processes the treats natural gas for third parties and our account. Each company may conduct operations through subsidiaries of its own. We also have several other subsidiaries, none of which conduct material operations. So now they have a table that provides certain information about their assets. Um, now, emergence from voluntary re uh, reorganization under Chapter 11 of the Bankruptcy Code. On May 20, um, 22, 20, 20, uh, on May 22, 2020, the debtors filled petitions for reorganization under Chapter 11 of Title 11 of the United States Code Bankruptcy Code. In the United States Bankruptcy Court for the Southern Dis District of Texas Houston Division, the Chapter 11 proceedings were jointly administered under the caption in Re Unit Corporation Case Number Blah Blah. During the pendency of the Chapter 11 cases, the debtors operated their business as debtors in possession, under the authority of the Bankruptcy Court and under the Bankruptcy Code. The debtors filled their plan and the related disclosure statement with the Bankruptcy Court on June 9, 2020. On August 6, 2020, the Bankruptcy Court entered the findings of fact conclusions of law and Order 1, approving the disclosure statements of an, on a final basis uh, and uh, confirming the debtors. Amended Joint Chapter 11 Plan of Recognition. Reorganization, sorry. So they filed for Chapter 11 and they are basically announcing here that that's the, how that worked. Uh, then we have 21 segment uh, operation highlights. So uh, revenues uh, for oil and natural gas, revenues before eliminations increased by 69% from 2020, primarily due to higher average commodity pricing, uh, partially offset by lower production volumes. Operating costs before eliminations decreased 43% from 2020. Capital, capital expenditures increased 89% from 2020. Contract drilling. Revenues decreased 18% from 2020, primarily due to the absence of 2020 rig termination and standby fees. Average rig utilization increased by 8% to 10.9 rigs during 2021 while there was a 4% decrease in average day rate to $17.9 uh, uh, dollars. Operating costs decreased 7% from 2020 due to the decrease in rig fleet from 58 to uh, 21 in 2021. Midstream, revenues before eliminations increased 87% and operating expenses before eliminations increased 114% from 2020, primarily due to higher commodity pricing, partially offset by lower volumes. Acquired a serogenic processing plant, approximately 1.6 miles of low pressure gathering pipeline, and related compressor stations located in southern Kansas and uh, in November 2021. Financial information about segments. So, oil and gas, uh, oil and natural gas, general. All our oil and natural gas properties are in the United States. Our producing oil and natural gas properties and proved properties and related assets are mainly in Oklahoma and Texas, and to a lesser extent, Kansas, Louisiana, Montana, North Dakota, Utah, uh, and Wyoming. When we are the operator of a property, we try to use of a uh, we try to use one of our drilling rigs to drill any wells on the property. And we also use our midstream segment to gather our gas, if it is economical, to do so. Uh, then they have a table that presents certain information regarding their, uh, regarding their oil and natural gas operations. Uh, I recommend you guys see this by yourself because I'm not going to read uh, the numbers uh, because it might be... Uh, boring and it's pretty easy to consult yourself. 
uh, these positions. So the company initiated an asset divestor program at the beginning of 2021 to sell certain non-core oil and gas properties and reserves, the divestor program. On October 4, 2021, the company announced that it is expanding the divestor program to now include the potential sale of additional properties, including up to all of UPC's oil and gas properties and reserves. On January 20, 2022, the company announced that it has retained a financial advisor and launched the process. On March 8, 2022, the company closed on the sale of wells and related leases located near, near Oklahoma uh, Panda Hill for $5 million, subject to customary closing and post-closing adjustments with an effective day, uh, date of December 1, 2021. No gain or loss was recognized as the sale of the assets did not result in a significant alteration of the full cost pool. On August 16, 2021, the company closed on the sale of substantially all of our wells and related leases located near Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, uh, f um, Oklahoma for $19.5 million, subject to customary closing and post-closing adjustments. No gain or loss was recognized as the sale of the assets did not result in a significant alteration of the full cost pool. On May 6, 2021, the company closed on the sale for, uh, of, a substantially, uh, of substantially all of our wells and related leases located in Reno and Stanford counties uh, in Kansas for $7.1 million, subject to customary closing and post-closing adjustments. Again, there was no loss uh, or gain recognized because there wasn't a recognition, uh, significant alteration of the full cost pool. Uh, we also sold 5 million of other non-core oil and natural gas assets net of related expenses during the year ended uh, December 31, 2021. Well and leasehold data. Then there's a, uh, the table identifying certain information regarding, regarding their oil and natural gas exploratory and development drilling operations. Um, they share uh, the wells drilled, the um, wells produced, uh, wells producing or capable of producing. Um, then they also share their price and production data, uh, which is pretty important. Then they say that their buffalo field in Hampfield County, Texas, contain 20% and 16% of their total proved reserves in 2021 and 2020 respectively, expressed on an oil equivalent bar barrel basis. Our Mendota field in the granite wash play in the Texas Panda Hill contained 15% and 60% of our total proved reserves for those same years, also expressed on an oil equivalent barrel basis. There are no other fields that accounted for over 15% of our proved reserves. Oil, NGLs, and natural gas reserves. The table below identifies our estimated, proved, developed, and undeveloped oil, NGLs, and natural gas reserves. Then they, they provide uh, the total uh, proved, developed, proved, undeveloped, and total proved uh, for uh, the oil, NGLs, natural gas, and total proved reserves. Um, oil, NGLs, and natural gas reserves cannot be measured exactly. Estimates of those reserves require extensive judgment of reservoir engineering data and are generally less precise than other estimates made in financial disclosures. Now I'll read the company reserve estimation and technical qualifications. Our reservoir engineering department is responsible for reserve determination for the well in which we have an interest. Their primary objective is to estimate the well's future reserves and future net value to us. Data is incorporated for multiple sources, including geological, production engineering, marketing, production, land and accounting departments. The engineers review this information for accuracy as it is incorporated into the reservoir engineering database. Management reviews our internal controls to help provide assurance that all data has been provided. New well reserve estimates are provided to management and the respective operational divisions for additional scrutiny. Major reserves change on existing wells are reviewed. Um, major reserve changes on existing wells are reviewed regularly with the operational divisions to confirm completeness and accuracy. 
The external audit is being completed. The reservoir department reviews all the um, properties for accuracy and for forecasting. Um, then they, they share uh, the, engin um, the qualifications and responsibility of the different engineers. I don't think that's uh, very essential for us to read. Um, since if, if, you, if we identify that the management is uh, competent and honest, they, they will be hiring um, good engineers. So uh, you, you first ha has, uh, have to sift through the, the report and understand whether they are honest or not. And they may help you, this may help you understand better whether something is important to read or not. Um, yeah, so then we have uh, def some definitions and other proof reserve informations, which I don't believe is super important. Uh, but I will read uh, s for proof, for the includes the uh, ruling, submitted by the food. But I will be reading contracts. So our, our oil production is sold at near. Uh, at or near our wells under purchase contracts at prevailing prices and their arrangements customary in the oil industry. Our natural gas production is sold to interstate uh, and interstate pipelines and independent marketing firms under contracts with terms generally ranging from one month to a year. Few of these contracts prov uh, contain provisions uh, for readjustments of prices uh, as most are market sensitive. Customers. One customer accounted for 11% of our oil and natural gas revenues during the year ended in December 31, um, 2021. And no other company accounted for over 10% of our oil and natural gas revenues besides our midstream segment. Our midstream segment purchased 48%, uh, 48 million of our natural gas and NGLs um, production and provided gathering and transportation services of 3.3 million. Intercompany revenue from services and purchases of production between our midstream segment and our oil and natural gas segment has been eliminated in our consolidated financial statements. Now going to contract drilling. Our contract drilling business is conducted through unit drilling company. Through this company we will drill, uh, we drill onshore oil and natural gas wells for ourselves and for others. Our drilling operations are mainly in Oklahoma, Texas and New Mexico. And then there is a table that identifies certain information about the contract drilling segment um, and uh, things like number of drilling rigs available for use, average number of uh, drilling rigs owned and so on. Uh, description and location of our drilling rigs. An onshore drilling rig is composed of major equipment components like engines, draw works and hoists, derrick or masts, substructure, mud pumps, blowout preventers, top drivers and drill pipe. Because of the normal wear and tear from operating 24 hours a day, several of the major components like engines, mud pumps, top drives and drill pipe must be replaced or overhauled periodically. Other major components like the structure, uh, mast and draw works can be used for extended periods with proper inspection and maintenance. We also own additional equipment used in, uh, used in operating uh, our drilling rigs, including iron uh, roughnecks, automated catwalks, ski, uh, skidding systems, lar air, large air compressor trucks uh, and other support equipment. The maximum depth capacities of our various drilling rigs range from 9.5 K to 40 K feet, allowing us to cover a wide range of our customers' drilling re requirements. Then there's this interesting part where they say that fluctuating commodity prices directly affect the number of drilling rigs we can put to work, both positively and negatively. Generally, sustained higher commodity prices lead to greater demands for drilling rigs, while demand and rates tend to fall as commodity prices decline for any extended period. Drilling rig utilization increased during 2021 as commodity prices increased. 
The number of drilling rigs we can work also depends on several conditions besides demand, including the availability of qualified labor as well as the availability of needed drilling suppliers, supplies and equipment. Sorry. The drilling rig fleet. We reduced the number of drilling rigs available for use from 58 uh, December 31, 2020 to 21 during the second quarter of 2021. In order to focus on utilization of our BOSS drilling rigs and certain SCR rigs that are either currently under contract or candidates for future upgrades. Disposition. We sold non-core contract drilling assets for proceeds of 12.7 million net of related expenses, resulting in net gains of 10.1 million during the year ended uh, December 31, 2021. Drilling contracts. Our third-party drilling contracts are generally obtained through competitive bidding on a well-by-well -well basis. Contract terms and payment rates vary depending on the type of contract used, the duration of the work, the equipment and services supplied and other matters. We pay certain operating expenses, including the wages of our drilling rig personnel, maintenance expenses and incidental drilling rig suppliers, supplies and equipment. The contracts are usually subject to early termination by the customer, subject to the payment of a fee. Our, contract, uh, our contracts also contain provisions regarding id indemnification against certain types of claims involving injury uh, of persons, uh, property and for acts of pollution. The specific terms of these indemnifications are negotiated as a contract by contract basis. Most of our drilling contracts during 2021 and 2020 uh, were day work contracts. Under a day work contract we provide the drilling rig with the required personnel and the operator su uh, supervises the drilling of the well. Our day work compensation is based on a negotiated rate to be paid for each day the drilling rig is used. Most of our contracts are term contracts, with the rest being well-to-well -well contracts. Term contracts can range from months to multiple years and the rates can either be fixed throughout the term or allow for periodic adjustments. Customers. Five customers accounted for 79% of our contract drilling revenues during the year ended in, 20, in December 31, 2021. No other third-party customer accounted for 10% or more of our contract drilling revenues. Our contract drilling segment may also provide drilling services for our oil and natural gas segment. The contract drilling segment did not drill any wells for our oil and natural gas segments in 2021. Depending on the timing of the drilling services performed on our properties, those services may be deemed for financial reporting uh, purposes, to be associated with acquiring an ownership interest in the property. Revenues and expenses for these services are eliminated in our statement of operations, with any profit recognized reducing our investment in our oil and natural gas properties. Midstream General our midstream operations are conducted through Superior Pipeline Company LLC and its subsidiaries, of which we presently own 50% interest. Superior's operation consists of buying, selling, gathering, processing and treating natural gas. It operates 3 natural gas treatment plants, 12 processing plants, 18 active gathering systems and approximately 3.8k miles of pipeline. Superior and its subsidiaries operate in Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Superior is governed and managed under the Amended and Restated Limited Liability Company Agreement and a Management Services Agreement. The MSA is between our wholly owned subsidiaries, SPC Midstream Operating LLC and Superior. As the operator, we provide services such as operations and maintenance support, accounting, legal and human resources to Superior for a monthly service fee of uh, 0.3 million. The agreement specifies how future distributions are to be allocated among the members. Distributions from available cash, as defined in the agreement, were generally split 
evenly between the members prior to December 31, 2022. When the three-year period for units' commitment to spend 150 million uh, to drill wells in the Granite Wash Buffalo Wallow area ended. The total amount spent by unit towards the drilling commitment amount was 24.6 million. Accordingly, SP investors will receive 100% of available cash distributions related to periods subsequent to December 31, 2021, until the 72.7 million drilling commitment adjustment amount is satisfied. After April 1, 2023, either member may initiate a sell process of superior to a third party or a liquidation of superior's assets. In a sale event, the agreement generally requires cumulative distribution to SP investors in, ex in excess of its original 300 million investment, sufficient to provide SP investors a 7% IRR, or, uh, uh, internal rate of return, on its capital contributions to superior before any liquidation distribution is made to unit. As of December 31, 2021, liquidation distributions paid first to superior investors of 361.7 million would be required for superior investors to reach its 7% on liquidation IRR hurdle, at which point unit would be then entitled to receive up to 361.7 million of the remaining liquidation distributions to satisfy unit's 7% liquidation IRR hurdle, with any remaining liquidation distributions paid as outlined within the agreement. Effective March 1, 2022, the employees of the operator were transferred to Superior and the MSA was amended and restated to remove the operating services the operator was providing to Superior. There was no change to the monthly fee for shared services. The power to direct the activities that most significantly affect Superior's operating performance is now shared by the equity holders, unit corporation and SP investors then held by its operator. So this is very important because uh, the control is now uh, into Superior investors and unit corporations hands and not in the hands of the operator. Uh, Superior no, no longer qualifies as a VIE subsequent to the, amend, uh, to the amendments. Uh, so uh, I will search quickly what is a VIE subsequent. Uh, let's see, let's see. So it's a variable interest entity. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, to these amendments and we will no longer consolidate the financial position, operating results and cash flows of Superior as of March 1, 2022. We will subsequently account for our investment in Superior as an equity method investment under the HLBV method. So basically they are saying they will not account um, the operating results such as cash flow of superior in their own accounts but they will account it as an investment uh, as they as if they were investing like in the public markets or uh, held um, public equities uh, then we have a chart that uh, uh, informs us about the midstream segment for the periods indicated we have the gas gathered uh, and uh, gas processed and gl sold and uh, again, I won't be uh, citing the numbers. I'm still learning about how to do this kind of format, but I, I believe that um, I will share this in video form too. So uh, I, I won't uh, be uh, saying the numbers out loud so you guys can check it out by yourselves. And when I said this, I forgot I wasn't recording. So uh, until this part, maybe you will be uh, I don't know, seeing some other image, but uh, we now have a recording and that's what matters. Okay, so um, then we go on to disposition and acquisitions. 
In November 2021, we closed on an acquisition for 13 million, subject to customary closing and post-closing adjustments. That included a cyrogenic processing plant, approximately 1.6k miles of low-pressure gathering pipeline and related compressor stations located in southern Kansas. Impairments. In December 2021, we, de uh, we determined that the carrying value of the gathering system in Pennsylvania was not recoverable and exceeded its estimated fair value due to unfavorable forecasts of uh, forecasted economics. We recorded non-cash impairment charges of 10.7 million based on the estimated fair value of the asset group. Contracts. Our midstream segment provides its customers with a full range of gathering, processing and treating services. These services are usually provided to each customer under long-term contracts, more than one year. But we also have short-term contracts. Our customer agreements include this type, these types of contracts. Fee-based contracts. These contracts provide for a set fee of, uh, uh, for gathering, transporting, compressing and treating services. Our midstream revenue is a function of the volume of natural gas and it's not directly dependent on the value of natural gas. For the year ended December 31, 2021, 76% of our midstream segment's total volumes and 73% of its operating margins, as defined below, were under fee-based contracts. Commodity-based contracts. These contracts consist of several contract structure types. Under these contract structures, our midstream segment purchases the raw well uh, had natural gas and settles with the producer at a stipulated price while retaining all sales proceeds from third parties or retains uh, a negotiated percentage of the sales proceeds from the residue, natural gas and NGLs it gathers and processes, with the remainder being paid to the producer. For the year ended December 31, 2021, 24% of our midstream segment's total volumes and 27% of operating margins, as defined below, were under commodity-based contracts. I forgot here to give a quick note, which is that uh, being that their, their fee-based contracts is not dependent on the um, value of natural gas, but on the volume, this may be beneficial uh, because it follows demand better, but at the same time, when prices are higher, uh, the volume goes up. So it's, it's kind of the same thing, but they are not such directly uh, impacted by uh, the prices of natural gas. Okay. okay, with that being said, let's go on. For each of the above contract types, operating margin is defined as total operating revenues, less operating expenses, and does not include depreciation, amortization, and impairment general administrative expenses, interest expenses, or income taxes. Customers. Free customers accounted for 58% of our midstream revenues. We believe that there are other customers available to purchase our natural gas and NGLs if we were to lose these customers. Superior purchased 48 million of our oil and natural gas segment, natural gas and NGLs production and provided gathering and transportation services of 3.3 million. Intercompany revenues from services and purchases of production between Superior and our oil and natural gas segment has been eliminated in our consolidated financial statements. Competition. All of our business, uh, businesses are highly competitive and price sensitive. Competition in the contract drilling business traditionally involves factors such as demand, price, efficiency, the condition of equipment, availability of labor and equipment, reputation, and customer relations. relations. Our oil and natural gas operations likewise encounter strong competition from other oil and natural gas companies. Many competitors have greater financial, technical, and other resources than we do and have more experience th uh, than we do in the exploration for the production of oil and natural gas. Our drilling success and the success of other activities 
integral to our operations will depend in part during times of increased competition on our ability to attract and retain uh, experienced geologists, engineers and other professionals. Competition for these professions, uh, professionals can be intense. Our midstream segment competes with purchasers and gatherers of all types and sizes, including those affiliated with various producers, other major pipeline companies and independent gatherers for the right to purchase natural gas and NGLs, build gathering and processing systems and deliver the natural gas and NGLs once the gathering and processing systems are established. The principal elements of competition include rates, terms and availability of services, reputation and the flexibility and reliability of service. Human capital. We believe that our employees are critical to our future success and seek to provide competitive compensation and benefits in order to attract and retain a skilled workforce. We care about the well-being and development of our employees and aim to provide a culture of respect and collaboration by supporting employee training and development. We are also very focused on maintaining a culture of continuous improvement in safety and environmental practices. Safety and environmental stewardship uh, are uh, the forefront of everything that we do. As of March 3, 2022, we had 788 employees, none of whom are members of unions of, or labor organizations. This is very important because the, the fact that employers are unionized uh, gives a whole different set of uh, risks and dynamics uh, in a given business. Our workforce includes 478 employees in our contract drilling segment, 136 employees in our oil and natural gas segment, and 128 employees in our midstream segment, and 46 in our general corporate group. We also, we also periodically utilize the services of independent contractors. We have not experienced any strikes or workforce stoppages. Governmental regulations. General. Our business depends on the demand of services from the oil and natural gas exploration and development industry, and therefore our business can be affected by political developments and changes in laws and regulations that control or curtail drilling for oil and natural gas for economic, environmental or other policy reasons. Various state and federal regulations affect the production and sale of oil and natural gas. All states in which we conduct activities impose varying restrictions on the drilling, production, transportation and sale of oil and natural gas. This discussion of certain laws and regulations affecting our operations should not be relied on as an exhaustive review of all regulatory considerations affecting us. Due to the multiple of complex federal, state and local regulations and their susceptibility to change at any time by later agency actions and court ruling that may affect our operations. So, uh, in this part, I will be uh, providing uh, some notes that I, I had ta uh, taken because um, this is pretty bureaucratic and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So, the Natural Gas Act of 1938 gives the FERC the authority to regulate interstate transportations and sales of natural gas for resale. The Natural Gas Policy Act modified uh, FERC's authority over interstate gas sales, regulating maximum selling prices for certain gas categories in first sales. The Natural Gas Wellhead Decontrol Act deregulated natural gas prices for all first sales of natural gas, including typical well-held uh, sales by producers. Natural gas produced from their properties is now sold at market prices, subject to any private contracts in effect. FERC still has authority over interstate natural gas transportation despite the Decontrol Act. Since 1985, FERC implemented regulatory changes to promote competition, transforming the role of interstate pipeline 
companies to focus on gas transportation rather than wholesale marketing. Pipelines must have a separate market affiliate operating independently and in competition with other merchants. Interstate pipelines must provide open and non-discriminatory transportation services to all producers, marketing companies, local distribution companies, industrial end users and other customers. FERC expanded open access regulations to certain aspects of interstate com uh, commerce through similar orders affecting intrastate pipeline, providing similar intrastate services. Okay, uh, so with that being said, let's go on to this part.